Let's start with our first piece of small paper. We're going to draw our mug and our plate on our small paper. Find a dark crayon that you'll be able to see on whatever color paper you chose. First, let's draw the dish. The dish is a long oval. We're going to draw it all the way at the bottom of our paper. I'm going to draw a frowny line that's really long and then curve it to a smile line. It's a big long oval. Look how it almost touches the sides of the paper. Nice and big. Now we're going to draw the mug. The mug should be above the plate. They're not going to touch. We're actually going to glue them together later. So we're going to draw them separate. To draw our mug, we're going to do two long diagonal lines on the side of our paper. Look how the two lines point inward. Two big lines that are diagonal. Now I'm going to connect them with a curve at the bottom and a curve at the top. And I need one more frowny line curve. Now I have my cup and my saucer. I also need a handle for my mug. So to draw my handle, I'm going to pick either side and I'm going to draw it as big as I can, but I don't have a lot of space. So I'm going to draw a curve that goes pretty far away from the mug, almost to the side of the paper. And I'm going to do one more curve next to it. Now I have my mug and my saucer. Next, let's cut out these two shapes. Remember, your scissors are always pointing away from you and your paper is going to turn. So when I'm cutting my saucer, look how I'm turning my paper, but keeping my scissors straight ahead. I'm going to make sure my scraps get in my table trash basket. Now, how can we cut out the inside of our mug's handle? There's a neat trick. If we fold our paper so we create a crease, on the handle in that inside oval, then I can cut on the fold and now I've made a hole I can put my scissors in. Now that my hole, my scissors are in the hole, I can carefully cut out the inside part of my handle. Remember, turn the paper, not your scissors, to cut on the lines to get out the inside of your handle. There, I just cut a hole in the middle of my paper. Now let's decorate our mug and add patterns. We've learned all about different kind of patterns. Zigzags, wavy lines, polka dots. Also, maybe I'll color in my hot cocoa brown because my hot cocoa is chocolate colored. So I'm gonna find a brown crayon to color in my hot cocoa. My hot cocoa goes inside that top area of my cup. Okay, now I can go back to patterns. Maybe I have some wavy line patterns on my mug. Maybe I have some polka dot patterns. Look how I'm mixing my patterns together to make the design on my mug. It's not just one pattern, it's many. I could even add patterns to my saucer, the plate. I think I'm gonna make my patterns in an oval shape because that will make it look like it's actually a plate by coloring in an oval shape. My yellow is a very light color and didn't show up super well on my green. So think about colors that you'll be able to see when you're coloring. Maybe I'll even do a broken line pattern on my saucer. Look how now I can set my mug on the saucer once I'm ready to attach it to my background. Once we're done with the patterns on our mug, we can create the patterns on our background. You'll have a big piece of paper next, and the first thing we need to do is divide it in half with a line. We're going to create a horizontal line. Then we're going to create the wall pattern in the background and the table pattern in the foreground. Think of all the different things that you can use to make your patterns. Lines, shapes, designs, swirls. Maybe you want to combine different patterns together. 
Once you're ready, go ahead and decorate your background in two different big patterns. Once you're happy with your wall and your table design, we finally get to glue our mug and plate on the background. So I'm gonna use my glue stick to make sure I cover the back of my plate with glue. I'm gonna trace the shape of my glue of my plate, make sure there's lots of glue, and I'll place my plate on the table. That's the bottom half of my paper. Press, hold, and count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my mug. I'm going to trace the shape of my mug, maybe even put some in the middle. Don't forget your handle. And before that has time to dry, I'm going to flip it over, make sure my mug is on the plate, and then press and hold and count to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now that that's stuck, I finally get to add the final detail. The marshmallows, or the whipped cream, or the steam. It's kind of up to whatever you want to call it. Everyone gets one cotton ball, but we're actually going to pull that cotton ball apart to make some fluff. So we're going to tear our cotton ball, and once it's nice and torn up, we're going to take our glue, put some glue on the hot cocoa, and we're going to take our fluff and press it onto the hot cocoa. If you want some steam coming up off of your mug, then you could even draw a curvy line coming up from your mug with your glue, and you can stick your fluff to that curvy line too. Now it looks like there's steam rising up out of your mug. If you have extra fluff, you can share it with a neighbor or we'll just throw it away. Now we have our warm hot cocoa ready to go.